What's up guys, Lost here, and my hair is an absolute goddamn mess, but that's not why we're here. So, today we're sorting out movement, and uh, yeah, just enjoy the video guys, and let me know what you think. Let's jump right into it. So, first off we actually have to delete the creative and imparent player. This is because I want each character to have unique stats and movement speeds and things like that. However, if you have a career event in the parent and the child's object, they don't seem to play well together, and the code in the child's career event seems to overwrite um, the career event in the parent object itself, and, and therefore only accepts uh, the child's career event, which, you know, in, in hindsight, kind of makes sense. But yeah, that's just something we're going to have to do differently and have each child have its own unique create event. Let's actually create the create event now. So we need to recreate the float variable in here as it no longer exists in the parent object. And we also need a variable called movement, which obviously is going to dictate the distance at which the character can move. In this case, it will be two. And finally, we're going to call this script scrxy to grid. This is going to convert the coordinates of the character to a hex grid position, which will come in really useful later. So let's create that script now. GX is going to equal a value between 1 and 13 depending on the object's X value. So an X value of 38 is the very first hex position on the board. So GX is 1. Now we have to offset the hex a little bit. So we add 47 because that's how far between each other the hexes are from left to right. And then we times it by increments of 1 to specify uh, the following position in the row. If the object does not hold a quote legal x value, then we will specify the value as zero to show that it is off the grid, which theoretically should be impossible based on the way we're gonna code this. And then we do the exact same for the gy value, except we have 13 instead of 47, because that's just the distance between the hexes on the y axis. So here's just an example of that, just so you can visualize it. Now let's get creating the hexes on the board so that we can move between them. So under the timeline, we need to do two things. First off, we need to check for any existing hexes. And if we find them, then we need to delete them. And then we will create new hexes. We do this because if we don't delete uh, the hexes before we create them, and then we click between two different characters, then there will just be hexes all over the shop. So we have to be careful with that one. So let's create script hex move. We're going to use at param here to specify the script needs a parameter. This will just let us know what parameters are, are required by the ID at the bottom where you would normally, you know, type a function out, hit the bracket, and then it, it displays what parameters are required. So the temporary variable called movement will be argument zero, and that will be the movement of the character that we pass into the script between the brackets. So if movement is one, then we are going to create a move hex on all six surrounding hex positions. Uh, the values 47 and 13 are important here, as if you remember, they are the distance from one another. As you can see, I've labeled the six surrounding hex positions with their corresponding X and Y position from the player. Uh, the 47 and 13 space was an arbitrary design decision on my part, just because I thought it looked good. Uh, but yeah, these are the spots the hexes will be created at. We then have to do the exact same thing with a movement of two, except this time we have to take into account all positions that are two hexes away from the selected character. Now, this would be somewhat tedious to go through every single position we're creating the move hexes at and explaining it, you know, sort of mathematically again. So I'm going to show you all of the positions, and yeah, hopefully this is making sense so far. So yeah, just give the video a pause here if you need to sort of visualize. Um, the numbers behind this. So the next bit is pretty straightforward. We need to create script hex destroy. And in there, we just have to say with object hex move and then instance destroy. So remember, when we say with, it just means that we take control of the objects from inside another object slash script. Um, we don't have to specify if instance exists here because the with statement does that automatically. So we don't have to worry about any crashes caused by this. Now, I know a script may seem a bit unnecessary here, as it's just one line of code, but I'm planning for the future here, and we'll end up destroying a variety of hexes later on. At least that is the current plan. So we also have to destroy the move hexes down here too, because if you remember, 
This is where we are not clicking a player char character, but anything else, such as nothing but the floor. So on that event, we have to make sure that we destroy all the move hexes. So unfortunately, we're creating hexes off the grid, and we obviously can't be having that. Uh, so the solution to this I've come up with is a little bit makeshifty. Uh, I think, ultimately, you want to find a way of preventing their creation if they're not in a viable position before actually creating them. Uh, but what we're going to do is create the hexes, see if they're in an illegal position, and then destroy them if so. Now, fortunately for us, this is all going to happen within a single frame. Therefore, you will not see them before they're destroyed, uh, ultimately just making it look very natural, as if they were never there in the first place. Right, so at the bottom of here, we're going to look for a right click, as this is going to be our action button. We're left clicking as our selection button, right clicking will make us move. So on the event of a right click, we will first determine if there is an object hex move beneath the mouse, and if there is, we will store that instance inside a temporary variable called hex move. Now we're going to say with play selected and inside this code block we want to make a temporary variable that will turn into a path which I believe is also a temporary based on the fact that it's stored inside a temporary variable. Though it would be nice if someone could clear that up. As you can see the path is called move path. We need to add two points to this path. The first being the x and y of the selected character as that's where we need it to start and the following point is the, the hex moves x and y. We then set the path as closed so that it doesn't follow a continuous loop between the two points. We then start the path and check to see if the x coordinate that we're moving to uh, is higher than the players or lower than the players. If it's higher than the players, then that means it's to the player's right where we set Im image x scale at 1, which essentially, which is where it starts and just ensures that we're facing to the right. Else, we set it to minus 1 and this just inverts the character so that he'll be facing to the left if we uh, move the other way. And then we just simply destroy the hexes again. Now let's come up with a solution to destroying the hexes if they are not in a legal position. So first we need to allocate the move square a grid position by running the script x to y grid. This will give the hex a gx and a gy variable containing its grid position. So first we're going to say that if gx or gy, uh, that's what the two lines mean, um, then we will destroy the instance as if either of those values equals zero, then we know it to be in an illegal position. Now let's just break this bit down a little. So mod provides you with a remainder. If the remainder is zero, then it means it is an even number. Uh, what we're looking to do here is to see if the player is, an, is in an, an even column. Uh, as if it's on an even column, then that means it has less hex positions than the odd columns. Therefore, the columns do not have a y value of 1 or 9, you know, sort of converted to grid positions there. Uh, so, yeah, they're simply not legal board positions since they do not exist. So, hopefully, you found that enjoyable and could sort of see what was going on. Uh, any feedback would be much appreciated. And, uh, yeah, if there's anything you didn't understand, hit me up in the comments and I'll reply to all of them as I normally would. Catch you later, guys. Hey, guys, Lost here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're new and want more content like this, and please give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Catch you guys later.